we generated a salmon index. We use salmon to quantify eight different samples. We imported the output from those eight different samples into R. And then we did very basic difference expression with dseq2. All right, we're gonna start by downloading the reference files that we need. And I'm gonna be using GenCode which is a manually annotated and easy to use reference database. And when I say it's easy to use, all we really have to do is go down to the FASTA files. We can right click on the link, copy link, and then we can use curl or wget to download this. So we're downloading the actual transcript sequences. Once that's done, we could theoretically make the index just with that, but we're going to add decoys to our index to make the mapping more accurate. It might be a little slower, but it's by far worth it. So we're going to go on back over to gen code and still in the FASTA files, we're going to scroll down to the genome sequence, the primary assembly, and do the same thing. Copy the link and download it. Okay, so to do this, we need three things. We have the transcript sequences we just downloaded, the primary assembly, and we have our FASTQ files. You can have these set up however you want. You'll just need to point to them later, but if you want to follow along exactly with this tutorial, I have them in a FASTQ parent directory, and then within the FASTQ parent directory, I have individual directories for each sample where I have an R1 and an R2 FASTQ file. But anyways, we're ready to start creating the Salmon index. But before I begin, I should point out that Salmon has some pretty thorough documentation. I really recommend giving this a thorough reading before you actually do your alignment. So before we can start, we need to create a decoys text file that has the name of every sequence that we want to use as a decoy. And in this case, we're using the primary assembly as a decoy, so we need to get the chromosome names. The Salmon documentation has provided a link to some of these commands. I'll put the link in my description. But anyways, what we're doing is just getting every line that starts with a caret and then cutting the first part out. So we now have this decoys.txt. And if we look at the first 10 lines of it, you see it's just the chromosome or the sequence names from that file. And the only other thing we have to do is remove the caret. So we're going to use sed to do this. You could easily just control find replace in any text editor. So if we look at it now, we just have the same thing with the caret removed. And so the decoys.txt is now ready. The next thing we're going to do is we need to combine the two FASTA files together. The order here is important, so we need the transcripts to be before the decoy sequences. So we're going to cat gen code transcripts onto the primary assembly and we can call it whatever we want. So this is the file we're going to use in combinations with decoys.txt to make the index file. So I've already installed salmon into a conda environment. There's multiple ways to install it. Conda is pretty easy to do. But anyways, let's do the indexing. We're going to use dash t and going to pass the transcript file, which is the one we just made, and then dash d for the decoys text. And then you can do an argument for how many cores you want to use. This will just help to speed it up. And then dash i, we'll just call whatever we want. This will be the output directory for the index. And then we have to specify in this case gen code because the delimiters in the transcript file are bars and by default salmon index is looking for spaces anyways we can run that and when i was running the salmon index even with the decoy genome i never used more than 13 gigabytes of memory all right once that's done we can align our fastq files I have a script that can run all of them at the same time, but I'm going to do an example running it against one sample for those of you who might have your data organized a little differently. So we're going to do salmon quant. We're going to pass dash i to our index directory, human salmon index. 
And then we're going to do a dash L. And the dash L is going to be for our library type. And A stands for automatic. And that will tell Salmon to figure out your library type automatically, which is usually the easiest way to do this. And then if you have single read files, you're going to pass dash R and then the path to your fast Q. But we have paired reads, so we're going to do dash 1. And then this is going to be the path to the R1 fastq file. And then dash 2 is going to be the path to the R2.fastq. And then we want to pass validate mappings. And then dash O is going to be the output path. So we're going to make a new directory that the output's going to go into, and that's going to be called salmon out. And then we can call it whatever we want within that directory. I could replace these placeholders and run this. But I don't want to do that for each of the samples. I have eight different samples, so I'm just going to use a script. I'll upload this on GitHub, but I just have the path to the salmon index path to my parent fastq directory and then I loop over all the directories within that fastq directory and get everyone that starts with SRR and then I pull out the R1 path and then the R2 path so of course if your naming conventions are a little different you'll have to play with this and then I take these paths that I initialized up here and I just pass them to the salmon quant it's going to be exactly the same as like what we just did in the terminal. So we can just run that script and it'll go through all the fastq directories and run salmon against them. All right, so when that finishes, we have our salmon out folder. And let me just bring over the GUI to look at that. So we have within our salmon out folder, a sample directory for each of the outputs. And within one of those, the most important file here is going to be this quant.sf file. And that file is just the mapping statistics along with some of the metadata, like the transcript name, its length. So next, we're going to use TXI import in R to load in all those quant files. And importantly, we're going to use TXI import to sum all the transcripts and the individual genes so that we have gene level counts. Of course, with Salmon, you can do transcript specific analysis, but we're just going to use this in this instance to do gene level analysis. So I started an R notebook inside the same directory that we have our salmon output parent directory. And we're going to need a few libraries, of course, TXI import, but we're also going to need ensemble DB annotation hub. And if you want to do your differential expression in DSeq, you don't have any of these, you'll need to install them through Bioconductor. And we're going to start by initializing Annotation Hub. We can then query Ensemble. And in this case, I know exactly that I want the Ensemble DB Homo sapiens 109 build. Of course, if you're using mouse, you'll have to replace this with muscleless and then the build number. But for example, you can just search other builds. For example, if I put 108 here, It'll come up with the earlier 108 build, but 109 is currently the most recent one available here. Down here is what we need. We can retrieve the record with this key. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. It'll have to download it if you haven't already. I already have. And then we're just going to convert this into a simple two column data frame. So we're just getting the TX ID and the gene ID. So our TX ID is the transcript ID and then the ensemble gene ID. This part might be a little different depending on how your output is set up from Salmon. Um, of course, I put all my Salmon output into the Salmon out parent directory, and then I can get the path to all those files with list files here, just matching quant.sf. So if we look at that, here are the eight paths to our quant files. All right, now I want the actual sample IDs. You can do this several different ways, like with string R, but I'm just going to use list file again to get the directory name and then G sub to get rid of the underscore quant. So now if we look at sample names here, it's just the sample names. And then we're just going to combine sample names with the quant file paths into a named list. 
And if we look at that, we have the sample names and the paths. So this is what you need. How you get here doesn't matter. And now we can actually use TXI import, passing that name list we just made, specifying that it's salmon data, and specifying that we're doing transcript to gene, and ignoring the version of the transcript, so it ignores the dot one or dot two, whatever is after the transcript. All right, so TXI is going to be this three component object with abundance counts and lengths if you wanted to here you could theoretically round the counts and then save it as a csv dc2 will do something similar and we'll show that in a second but these are your estimated counts on a gene level not a transcript level but we're ready now to import this data into dseq so we're going to start setting up our dseq object so we have sample names here which is just a list or a vector of our sample IDs. And I know which corresponds to which condition. So I'm just going to put that in here. The first four, in this case, the first four in this list are knockouts and the other four are wild type. And then I'm just going to combine those two lists or vectors into this data frame where we have our ID and our condition. And then dseq has a dseq data matrix from TXI import. So we just pass our TXI, our column data, and then our formula here is really simple. We just have condition, no batch or anything, and that creates our dseq object. And from here, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of dseq. I'll just do a very basic default differential expression since that's not really the main purpose of this video. But we can run dseq. Uh, we can plot the PCA if we wanted to. But importantly here, I'm just going to do the differential expression between our knockout and wild type. So if we look at res, these are the actual DE results. And for example, if we wanted to look at just the significant ones, we can get rid of NAs and then filter by the p-value and the base mean, since genes with very low expression are going to be highly variable. So in this case, we have 2,400 differentially expressed genes. You can filter by up or down or however you want to do it. Again, I'm not going to go into detail here. But this is how we start with raw FASTQ files and in the end get counts from salmon and import that into dseq2. And the one thing I didn't point out here is you can actually just export the counts if you don't want to use dseq2 from our DDS object. You can just write this as a CSV, and now your counts are saved.